Just yesterday, a lady came up to me with tears in her eyes. She said, this is incredible. And she kept saying that. I said, well, it sure is. She said, I'll be back. How long are you here? And she'd been in here for a couple of hours. I was not surprised to hear that because we hear it all the time about how fascinating this exhibit is and how much truth it speaks to the heart. We're Bill and Peg White from Pensacola, Florida. And we had the experience of seeing the Eucharistic miracle at Lanciano, Italy. The priest was saying mass and the priest was actually having doubts about whether Jesus was going to be fully present when he pronounced the words of consecration. Well, the host turned into what looked like flesh. Uh, when you go look at it, it looks like flesh. In the 1970s, the, the uh, local authorities decided, well, let's see if, let's have it analyzed, the scientific analysis, and see if what we think it is, it really is. And so a professor from the University of Siena, who's a professor in several different disciplines, examined the host. He was at least the lead examiner. Used quite a few different tests, including uh, running uh, scans of the proteins in the blood to compare it with normal human blood, and it came back as normal human blood. In fact, it's blood type AB. And the flesh, he examined, and in fact, it is flesh. In fact, it's a slice of the left ventricle of a heart. It even has uh, branches of blood vessels in it and the vagus nerve as well. Uh, when you look at it, it sure looks like that to me, you know, once somebody's explained it to you. But of course, what he also looked for is whether there were preservatives uh, that could explain how this could be there pretty much intact over that length of time, not hermetically sealed. And they found nothing like salt or anything else that would explain how it could it even just be there, much less have turned from uh, from a host to flesh. Now this exhibit, the part that we take, we only take a third of the exhibition itself, but it has about 50 displays of miracles that have occurred around the world uh, over the centuries, different countries. And these are all Vatican approved. We started out actually in December of 2019, uh, bringing this particular exhibit to our own parish, St. Thomas More in Pensacola. And that was followed by St. Michael's in Pensacola. And then in January, we set about to uh, take it all over Florida. But we've been as far as Billings, Montana. Um, we've been to Phoenix. We've been all over Texas. Um, and we are currently spending a lot of time now in our own diocese trying to make sure all our parishes have this gift. People, after seeing the exhibit, will come up just crying. We really needed to see this. Thank you for bringing it. This isn't just something miraculous. This is stunning. I'd like you to know about the young man that started this whole exhibit. His name was Carlo Acutis. He's a 15-year-old young man who lived in Italy. After he made his first communion, he never missed a day. Imagine such a young boy setting out to leave a legacy like this. It, it kind of blows the mind, um, but it has offered the world evidence that the Eucharist is the true presence of Jesus Christ. And I think most of the people that see the exhibit, it's really quite a confirmation of evidence that uh, what we believe is really true. You can view these online. If you go to therealpresence.org, it will give you all 152 miracles by country. We would really like to bring this exhibit to your parish, your school, retreat house. All you need to do is email us at pfellwhite1 at gmail.com.